right here. Yeah, right there, I see where he's at. Good call. All right, so uh, I, I genuinely hate it when companies request like hot take reviews, but I understand completely why the hot take review is necessary and why it's needed. Um, so like I said, Feiyachi sent me out their V90 M37 red dot combo um, per kind of what they kind of reached out to me and then I requested something a little different because I wanted to go back to the... I wanted to go back to a, um, a hybrid setup, but I also know that Feiyachi specializes in making variable magnifiers, so I got one of those as well. But primarily, the main focus that they wanted me to talk about was the Feiyachi V90. Um, I'm going off format here because uh, you guys know how I am. When I get my hands on something, I want to geek out. Plus, I'm trying something different here as well. I'm trying to keep everything within like a one to two gameplay segment or like a one gameplay segment per se maybe an unboxing segment or whatnot uh just to kind of keep things more toned down there are going to be like more longer discussional content that that will be in the crack cast but when it comes down to review content i want to kind of shorten things down a bit but still offer the information you would like that you that you want so uh so like i said I'll try to fit this within one to two gameplays, and that's what we're going to do right now. So, the V90 is cool. It's, okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me repeat this. What the hell is cool? All right, look. You sitting in the background what comes in the pot, what comes in the box. I'm treating the M37 in this video as two separate videos, even though I received them in the same exact box. I think in order to understand what you're getting with the Feiyachi V90 is that you got to understand this is going to be their newest product, their latest product that's only been out maybe about six months, probably a little less than that. Uh, the actual review of I've seen on this floating on, uh, on the interwebs of the YouTube space is about like four or five months old. You know what I'm saying? It could be a little older than that, but it's about four or five months old. Uh, so I'm assuming that this is this is this this and plus if you go on their website, it's literally under the new release portion of the website. Yeah, don't don't I, I choose not to question it. You know what I mean? It, it, it is what it is. Um, the Feiyachi V90 is actually a Trichicon MRO mimic, but it doesn't copycat it. It doesn't 
re re replicated. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't make a reproduction model of a Trichicon MR roll. Instead, what they do is they take the HMRO HD design features and uh, footprint and put that in their own particular red dot site. So what you're getting is you're getting a 2MO8 red dot um, in a 25 millimeter objective lens. MRO, you know what I'm saying? Um, you're also going to, this thing is going to come with about 11 levels of adjustment. So you're going to get nine daytime and two nighttime uh, adjustment settings for adaptability across different lighting conditions, as well as if you want to run it under night vision, you can utilize the one of the two nighttime settings for night vision and one of the nine daytime settings for, you know, low light or uh, non-night vision daylight uh, daylight use. Um, there's two little uh, buttons on the top. That's that's where you actually uh, turn it on and off. So basically, one click will, one click on the button will turn it on. Uh, you should be presented with a red dot sight, and then uh, in order to adjust it down, you hit the down button. Or adjust it up, you hit the up button. In order to turn it off, you hit the both buttons at the same time hold it for three seconds and it will turn off even shake awake won't turn it on so, yeah so yeah it has shake awake technology as well since we talked about that that's a beautiful segue um and that means it will automatically enter sleep mode after about eight minutes of inactivity um and then it'll just reactivate with any form of slight movement which is going to conserve the overall battery life um The battery life. What is the battery life? Yeah, we're doing all this live here. All right. So the battery life. Uh, is designed to give you thousands of hours of battery life on a single battery. I believe. I believe what's uh, stated is about. 20,000 hours of battery life how true that is I don't know because the battery that came with felt new I know it was probably a little depleted that thing died on me after like less than 100 hours I, I didn't even use it for 100 hours I use it for maybe like a whole day like eight hours 10 hours and that thing died on me you know I have to swap, swap it out I have a brand new battery in now, so we will uh, test and see and reflect and kind of give a little overall summary of how this thing c continues over a long period of time. 10 to 20,000 hours of battery life means that one thing, it means that I should not have to swap a battery out for at least a year because I don't, I'm not in the field for that long, you know what I mean, over a duration of a year. Over a duration of, the year, of a year, I'm usually on the field for about maybe uh, I don't know I would say like maybe uh, I, I really can't say I, I was going to say like 6,000 hours but 6,000 hours is like years you know what I'm saying I don't know whatever it, it is what it is you know what I'm saying so I really can't it should last more than a year is what I'm saying um, if I have to swap this battery out anytime before a year I'm going to be sorely disappointed um, and usually that's probably going to be my mistake too because I might end up not turning it off properly but I'm, I'm usually really I'm usually really uh, OCD about turning on and off turning off my optics when they're not in use so that's kind of something that I always do because to reserve battery life because I'm just a mere little civilian that doesn't get free batteries you know what I'm saying so um it is going to be waterproof rated it does have that ipx7 waterproof rating that is going to ensure functionality in overall wet conditions and it's built out of a durable aluminum body with shock resistance uh, with shock resistance it has been tested to withstand 800 g's of impact forces um and it can literally withstand anything up to 762 recoil because you gotta understand that this is not only designed for us air softers this is also designed for them like i said at the other video you know what i mean and who is them real steel gun owners so for people that want to buy budget optics for their real steel uh stuff this is what this is built for so it's all obviously it's going to handle the recoil of your gas blowback rifle and your electric recoil shotgun so you have nothing to concern yourself there as well 
um when it comes down to the uh overall capability uh, when it comes down to the overall mounting options for this it comes with two mounts inside the box it comes with a uh co uh, absolute uh, absolute co-witness mount for like literally flat mount one-to-one -one with your small profiled um flip up sights iron sights or it comes with a 154 mount or a one third coat witness uh mount um that will allow you to be able to still see your iron sights through the uh optic window but yet not have not be obstru up, uh, obtrused or uh obstructed by anything else right so you won't be able to this also the 154 mount also gives you plenty of space to uh, seated above things like laser, uh, uh, laser Amy modules, pack 15s, D balls, in galls, etc., etc., whatever you got going on for you. For me, it's my next torch WL60, which thank God next torch allowed me to run this for as long as I want to before I put a review up on these things. So, these you're gonna have to wait some time before I put a review on the next torch setup. That is coming though, but you guys are seeing that in the background for people that keep asking about it. You will see, you will get it. Trust me, it's just being put through hard, heavy use, long use before I actually put it, put the video up because next torch was like, oh, you don't have to worry about dropping the video within two weeks of getting the product type type thing. You can take your time with it. Like, All right, cool. Thank you. I, I like that and that's why the, with those type of companies I do long-term business relationships with you know what I mean because it means that in the long run I'm running your products and I'm going to give my true based opinion on it but if I had to do the short run this is where we sit at you know what I mean so in the short run uh, that's what you're getting you know what I'm saying uh, with the mounting the mounting footprint which I've never seen anyone talk about even in the firearms reviews I, I watched on this I think on the first airsoft review of this optic, but the firearms reviews of the optic never, no one ever ID'd the mounting footprint. Hey, guess what? Your airsofter nerd is here to, uh, to, uh, to, to appease your curiosities. It is an MRO footprint. Yeah, that's why I said it's, it's just MRO. It's their version of the MRO. It's the MRO footprint. Um, CR 120, CR 2020, 20, 20, 32 battery goes in the little uh turn cap here oh and I almost lost the turn cap goes in the turn cap here but it's a 2032 battery uh CR1 it's just one battery that's all it takes uh and you just put the turn cap back on you do have I think we got to talk about this cuz I didn't talk about it already so we do have the exposed turrets just like the MRO um and that allow you to go up down left right etc etc you have uh and you have the enshrouded uh battery cap or battery compartment etc etc but MRO footprint so if you want to run anything like the spec precision uh learn amounts or the uh on this or you want to do something like a pts unity mount uh like mro uh, you know just make sure it's mro footprint it should fit i will confirm that later on because i want more time behind these optic upon this optic setup like a lot more time so for me not for myself and for you guys that are nerds like me i will come back at a later date after i've upgraded the mounting system and got m more time beyond behind the optical setup and i will do a long-term review on this optical setup and how i like it in the long run in the short run i love this optic setup i hate the height ride that it's at right now it's a 154 i hate the low height ride because it sucks like trying to run a gun in close quarters with it and get an accurate red dot reading you know what i mean or accurate red dot uh a red dot picture uh, i hate doing that i that's why i love like 226 to 291 because of that so it will go this setup will go through uh upgrade process uh where i where i put this on top of either a spec precision 291 mount and get the actual m37 on a ftc mount so you guys will see that soon as i do that you'll probably see like maybe one or two gameplays of it and then i will then do a full like longer term review it might be a couple months down the road it might be a year down the road just be patient you know what i mean uh, but as soon as i do that i'll run it a couple times you guys will see a couple gameplays on that and then i'll come back and do a review like a full long term review on how i like this setup and why i keep running this setup if i keep running this setup you know um however the case 
However, the case, just be very aware of that. That that is going to be the MRO footprint. So for my nerds out there that want to know what the hell footprint is, it's MRO. It's literally designed after like the MRO HD. You have the HD uh, front glass and all that kind of good stuff. You have the uh, diamond coated went glass and it, it's good. You know what I mean? It also has the um, uh. Yeah, it's good. It, it has the glass on here that doesn't allow the sunlight to reflect inside of the window. So you're, you're good as well. So you can kind of use this in whatever light conditions you want and not worry about reflection or any of that, any of that kind of stuff getting on you. It, it's, it feels like an MRO HD. So if you're used to the MRO HD and you have a rip replica one and you want something that's similar to that but more suitable for uh, heavy recoil based, recoil based platforms, the Fayachi V90 might be an option for you. I say you might because it's all up to you. You know, at the end of the day, it's your money. You spend it the way you want to spend it. Uh, and speaking of money, the part that we're going to get to, and then we're probably going to end it. Uh, but speaking of money, uh, the price tag on the Fayachi V90 is going to be about uh, $129. $130 is going to be the original price tag. Uh, but you can find it on the website right now for $73.99, which is about $74. Bucks, and that's the V90 red dot site in and of itself. Uh, on Amazon, it's listed at $70.06 uh, with free or re returns now please note that prices may vary based on the ret retailer and any ongoing promotions etc etc blah 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 you guys know how that goes right so i can't really say much about this dot because it's just a dot you know what I mean? It's just a red dot site that kind of gives you the MRO capability or MRO capability, but in like an aim point looking body. So it kind of has that aesthetic of like you're running an aim point, but it gives the, it has the, uh, it has the durability and the housing, not the housing, the durability and the design features of an MRO. So that's kind of what it feels like. You know what I mean? I like it because it's unique uh, and it adds a little bit of uh, personality to my to my personal build. And I think that if that's what you're looking for, just a unique uh, red dot site that adds some personality to your build and is something different on the field. And you're not out there with the same shit looking like everybody else running their EOTechs and aim points, whether they be replicas or real. And you want something just slightly different, this would be like right up your alley. You know what I mean? Um... I like it. Uh, very easy to zero. This is probably one of the more easier things to zero because I don't have to worry about twisting off caps to zero it. The the exposed turrets are perfect. I get very audible solid clicks in the place. Half M away, by the way. And so zeroing it is one of the easiest things to do with this. So I can like drop it on a different setup if I want to for that weekend. Go in the backyard, zero it at 30 meters. And I know that it'll be good out to its maximum distance and not have nothing to worry about. Um, but nonetheless, I feel that this dot couples very, very well behind their magnifier. Um, behind their magnifier, it gives like an LPVO footprint, which I absolutely love that footprint. Um, but even without it, you can still run it on something like a AKS-74U or SMG without the magnifier. And you can still get the capabilities of uh, the fuel featured capabilities of this particular uh, red dot in and of itself. Um you do have the mount, the, the, like I said, I, I, I didn't want to talk about the mounts too much. I didn't want to talk about uh, anything more like less specific too much because technically that's kind of not what you're here for. You're kind of like, oh, well, what do the mounts do and how can they, uh, uh, it comes with two mounts. You can use whatever one you want to. I would suggest that if you're going to be using this dot for a fast paced gameplay environment um, and it's a little bit more difficult for you to get behind that glass then just go with a like a PTS Unity uh, fast MRO mount or go with the spec precision uh, 291 uh, learner mount. That's what I would say. I think that is going to be the best bet for you. And like I said, I'm either going to go one of those directions. I have both of them in my cart. Uh, when I decide which one I want to buy, obviously you guys will get updated on that a few a few gameplays after in this so that we can talk about a long-term performance review. I'll probably run it in this configuration for 
couple more weeks to uh, maybe a month or so and then I'll then purchase uh, a different mounting system and then run it in that configuration for a couple weeks to a month and then come back for a full review so give me a while it might take about six months so give me a while <clears throat> or two to six months so give me a while and then we can come back for that and that would be something I do personally for you guys that would not be on Fayachi that would not be something that Fayachi sponsors that would just be for me you know what I'm saying and it'll be cool it's a couple uh you know this sponsor you know a, a couple not sponsored but this couple the spec precision uh or pts hardware uh with the uh with with these aftermarket style red dot sites and um and magnifiers i i just want to see how it will come out and see how it will look you know um but other than that i'm done geeking out like i said if you're looking for a mro design style optic uh mro hd design style optic uh with a aim point aesthetic aim point aesthetic mro footprint this is probably going to be the uh way that you may want to go with your particular build um other than that that's all i gotta say so i gotta say and like i was saying oh yeah before before i before you guys go like i was saying uh i will do a full review on the combo itself later on the day i want to do it as a combo review um but with the new mounting hardware so i want to do uh i want to have a brand new mount brand new mounting solutions on here uh, that brings it higher for me and my playing environment as you see more cqb i need it higher you know what i'm saying i, I like it higher because it allows me to run with my head up and all i gotta do is snap the gun out and the dots already behind my eye you go know what i'm saying i love the heads up display so when i get it in the when i get it at the proper uh optical center line that i like it i'm going to run it a couple times that way and then i'm going to bring back the full setup you know what i mean as a particular review just for you guys and not for feyachi just for you and myself because i'm a nerd so but that's it yeah that's it you can leave now i'm sorry i didn't mean to take up too much of your time peace and blessings